it's so striking that anywhere there's instability or an attack on democracy in Africa, the winner group is involved. And more often than not, they are on the side of the militia. You look at Burkina Faso, for instance, all the country minds are taken over by proxies of the winner group. The same thing that is happening in Sudan. Wagner is like the connecting point of gathering intelligence around our natural resource makeup in Africa. One, Wagner also gathered intelligence about the governance structure in Africa. Sudan's gold is a source of wealth for Wagner, but as well as controlling the purse strings, it's also acting as a political puppet master. We have identified that those type of complex uh, relationship between different companies and Wagner uh, very often lead to one person and often uh, citizens of Russian nationality that would kind of control the overall setup of these different actors. Wagner may be a private company, but it's also clear it's a vehicle for Russian influence. The Kremlin says Sudan's leaders have every right to use its services. His Excellency. There is no uh, clear um, uh, vision of what is the legal stature of the group, whether they are indeed private military and security companies or not. And we know these are prohibited under the Russian law. To date, Wagner has supported, trained and armed the RSF in Sudan, but the organization has a track record of switching sides when it suits them. Wagner Group's interests represent primarily the Wagner Group, um, as opposed to um, any specific um, uh, Sudanese entity. What we've seen over the past several years uh, is that Wagner keeps on switching uh, its allegiances. Russia is seeking to expand uh, its footprint uh, across uh, Africa. They certainly um, you know, want um, uh, port access, and uh, Russia also wants to uh, you know, divert attention to what it's doing um, in Ukraine.